In this lecture, we are going to circle back to the earlier part of the previous lecture, which is how do we define the best model? We know that Otto Arima will find the best model out of some set of models, but of course, in order to make any sense of that, we need to know what it means for a model to be the best. Because these models come from the statistics literature, if you come from a machine learning background, you will recognize that machine learning people might approach this topic differently. However, ARIMA is a statistical method, and so generally when we look at how these libraries work and what they do, they will be using techniques founded on traditional statistics rather than machine learning. What is somewhat interesting about Auto ARIMA is that we end up coming full circle. As you may recall, the reason that we use methods such as the ACF and the PACF is because we want a more direct way of choosing hyperparameters than simple trial and error. In comparison, trial and error seems like kind of a very naive approach. And yet, with auto ARIMA, that is exactly what we do. It turns out that the method of manually looking at the ACF and the PACF does not always lead to the optimal answer. Auto ARIMA does a more exhaustive search and therefore has a better opportunity of finding the best answer. Now, one method you may have thought of is grid search. That is, searching through every possible set of hyperparameters in a grid. For example, if you had two hyperparameters to search for, this would be a two-dimensional grid. For example, you might want to try different combinations of P and Q from 1 to 10. So it's 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and so on. If you had three hyperparameters to search for, this would be a three-dimensional grid. A grid search would be simply to look through every possible position on the grid to find the best combination of hyperparameters. Now, although Auto Arima gives you the option to do this, this is not the default behavior. Instead, Auto Arima uses a stepwise algorithm to more intelligently find the best set of hyperparameters. It's true that computers are so fast nowadays that they allow a function like Auto Arima to be possible. However, a full grid search can still be quite slow. Therefore, we typically use the stepwise algorithm as the default. All right, so when we run Auto Arima, it's going to use some criterion to evaluate each model. The model that gives us the best value will be the model chosen. Two sort of equally good evaluation criteria are the AIC and the BIC. AIC stands for Akaiki Information Criterion, and BIC stands for Bayesian Information Criterion. The intuition behind both of these is the same. When we are building machine learning models, we often have to make a trade-off. This trade-off happens between model complexity and model accuracy. For ARIMA, model complexity means increasing the values of P and Q. Recall that P is the number of past data points to include in the model, and Q is the number of past errors to include in the model. You can imagine that, as we add more and more terms, the model will get more and more accurate. In fact, if you've studied linear regression with me in the past, then you know that even adding completely random noise will increase the accuracy of your model. This is not good. How do we know when enough is enough? How do we know when we've overdone it? In statistics, the answer is to penalize the model complexity. Again, if you've studied with me in the past, then you know what I'm about to discuss. If you haven't, that's okay, but feel free to ask me about this on the Q&A if you want to learn more. It turns out that the loss function when we optimize these ARIMA models is the negative log likelihood. It also turns out that, for the most part, minimizing the negative log likelihood is equivalent to minimizing the squared error. So this doesn't contradict anything I said earlier about minimizing the squared error of the predictions. The log likelihood is more general, however, since it can account for variance. Now, if we only look at the log likelihood, we might end up overfitting. So what we do is we add a penalty term to the negative log likelihood. The main difference between the AIC and the BIC is that this penalty term is computed differently. So just in case you're curious, the AIC and the BIC are defined as follows. For both of these, you will have two times the negative log likelihood. So in these equations, L represents the likelihood. And so each of these contains the term minus two log L. 
For the AIC, the log likelihood is penalized by adding two times the number of parameters in the model. For the BIC, it's penalized by adding the number of parameters in the model times the log of the number of data points. So they both do the same thing, just slightly differently. Auto ARIMA happens to use the AIC by default, although it's often said that both of these usually lead to the same answer anyway. For some reason, statisticians always discuss both of these simultaneously, even though you always end up having to choose just one. Alright, so now that we've discussed the statistics way of doing model selection, I want to briefly discuss how a machine learning person might go about this task. Note that this is entirely theoretical at this point. We are not going to use this method, and I only mention this out of interest. In machine learning, we often don't care that much about the number of parameters in a model. One reason why this is, is that you might be comparing different kinds of models. If you're comparing a decision tree to a neural network, for example, they are not really comparable in that way. Another reason is, for modern methods such as deep learning, it often doesn't matter. In the pre-deep learning era, that is, before people even came up with the phrase deep learning, you will see a lot of papers on neural networks talking about this idea of comparing the number of parameters to the number of samples. This makes a lot of sense when you look at linear regression, because the actual data matrix X has the number of rows equal to the number of samples, and number of columns equal to the number of parameters. So this makes sense when you consider linear algebra, and the solution for linear regression and so on. People used to extend this thinking to neural networks, but today, we have found that neural networks don't actually behave badly when you have many more parameters than samples. Today, you can have neural networks with billions of parameters that cost the equivalent of millions of dollars to train. So it's not really model complexity that we care about in machine learning. In machine learning, what we really care about is the ability to generalize. That is to say, we don't want our model to be accurate only on the data that it was trained on. We want it to be accurate for data that it hasn't seen yet. This is important for pretty much everyone that does machine learning. For example, if you're building a recommender system, those recommendations will be going to people who have not yet seen the movies or purchased the products that you are going to recommend. If you're building a fraud detection system, you want to detect future fraud, not past fraud, which you already know is fraud. If you're building a time series forecasting model, you want the forecast to be accurate, not just the data from before the forecast. For many models, this is highly correlated to model complexity, which explains why model complexity was something people cared about in the past. You would see plots such as the following, where the test performance starts to degrade when the model becomes too complex. So given this information, what might we want to do instead if our task is to choose the best model? Well, why not simply check the out-of-sample accuracy or the test accuracy directly? In other words, why bother checking the AIC or the BIC when we can evaluate each model according to its out-of-sample accuracy? This seems like it'll more closely do what we want to do rather than adding some penalty term to the in-sample accuracy, which we already know is less relevant. In the scenario where we are using out-of-sample data to choose hyperparameters, we would call this the validation set rather than the test set. You might use methods such as cross-validation to choose your hyperparameters, although that will be a topic for another lecture. So that makes sense when what you care about is good accuracy. However, one reason to use the AIC and the BIC is because we really are trying to achieve the simplest model possible. As you recall, one of our main motivations is modeling the data and explaining how it arose rather than making predictions. If this is our motivation, then it makes sense to want the simplest model possible that can adequately explain the data that we saw. In statistics, sometimes we call this parsimony. We say that we want to find the most parsimonious model.